I have sitting next to me uh, Canadian Sigmund Brower, the dad. Come on in here, Cindy. And, and landed immigrant. All so, right. Yeah. Is that since you were here last? Uh, it's pretty, pretty recent. Pretty recent, yeah. So, American landed immigrant, trophy husband, arm candy. That's, that's hey, the intro. Hey, why was that not in my information sheet? <laughs> You guys are amazing. I, I'm just trying to catch up. We had to change all the numbers on albums and awards and because you're just so prolific. I'm asking for a count on your novels, Sigmund, 18? 18. 18. And you know what I want to say right off the top because it's just too sweet. Uh, for parents watching, kids are going back to school, some maybe a little reluctantly. Boys typically aren't hugely academic. Now that's not stereotypical but mm -hmm. um, you know one of the cool things about you is that um, you really did, struggled. Did you just slam half our population? I might have and so I'm very sorry. I just I have a son and I know that <laughs> girls tend to be more into the studies. Isn't it true? Most of the time. Uh, your story is so cool because y you almost d didn't make it through English classes. You barely well, passed. And, and this is where I'd, I'd like to try to bail you out. You know I just kind of gave you the shot like you just slammed 50 percent but I go to schools all the time and yesterday I was at uh, worked with homeschoolers. I love trying to help kids read and write and I think for guys it's yeah you could say we're not academically inclined but it's also a matter of who's your audience. I'm, I mean when you're a grade three guy and your teacher says all right boys and girls we're gonna read Anna Green Gables <laughs> and then let's discuss how we feel after we're finished uh -huh. reading it. You're a guy going... <laughs> squirm, squirm. Do you have like, instead of Little House on the Prairie, could we read Little Shark on the Prairie? <laughs> right, so we will read and we it. will be academically inclined, but there, there, I think there truly are some gender issues um, and, and teachers recognize it and, and I sure recognize it when I write for kids. I try to grab the boys who don't read much. Mm, here's a really good example. And I don't, what year was this published? I should have looked. Uh, uh, good question. This is Degrees of Guilt. The, my daughter is cleaning out a room off to university. She said, Mom, this trilogy was amazing. Talks about some pretty raw, real teen issues. Uh, you know, it's about choices. Uh, degrees of guilt, because there are drugs, good- Drugs, violence. Yeah, good kids can make a bad, we've all made bad choices. And for most of us, we got away with it. I am right? so thankful that a teacher encouraged you, encouraged you not to give up on what seemed like it, it too definitely, tough. It definitely writing. came from a teacher. Yep. And, and I guess to all the viewers, it's like you never know when that one word of encouragement can make a huge difference in a kid's, in a kid's life. And then seven years of uh, rejections. Seven years. We're talking writing or my marriage proposals to Cindy? <laughs> You're writing. Okay. <laughs> You're writing. And you stuck with it. And Thanks, honey. Th here's the latest. Who Made the Moon? Uh, that's an interesting title. Well, um, I had help from Cindy with that title, but we were out on the deck one night, and the moon was just hanging over the horizon, looking gorgeous as it does. And Savannah, at age three, said, Daddy, who made the moon? And for a, a three-year-old, my answer was pretty simple. Well, God did. And at three, she said, oh, thank you, Daddy. And later we started talking about it at 18. I don't know that giving the answer like that is going to be as simple. Because when you're 18 and you've, you've left home and now you're in university and you have professors with an atheistic worldview, mm -hmm. it's not as easy as, well, Daddy told me God made the moon. That's all I need. They're going to need a little more ammo. They're going to need some more ammo, and and you, tr you know, you told me about an interesting statistic that is is frightening. Yeah, right? only one out of every four college university students <coughs> come out of that education system with their faith intact. They get yeah. brainwashed. Well, you know, kids are going to make their own faith choices. We, much as we want our kids to have our faith, they're going to make their choice, and and I think. Uh, um, you know, we see that when the rich young man walked up to Jesus and said, what do I need to do to go to heaven? And Jesus gave him the whole parameter and the rich young man walked away. Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't run after him saying, uh, come on back, wrong choice. I'm going to help you make the right choice. I'm going to force you. Our kids are going to make their choices. And too often they get to university and science is the enemy to their faith. Because I, I, I think we grew up 
parents are often afraid of the questions that science leads, so we don't even want to talk about it. And they get to university and all of a sudden this, the professors are saying, da 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 da, how can you believe in God? And, and I want to say to parents out there, science is not the enemy. And, and the first thing I'd say is Anthony Flew, the world's most famous atheist, an entire career built on saying God does not exist, at age 81, made global headlines, this was a few years ago, when he said, guys, I was wrong. I can no longer be an atheist. And the reason he gave was science. He said, science is so compellingly pointing towards a supernatural being behind this universe that I'm giving up my entire life philosophy and I've got the courage right now to say that. Wow. And, and now the danger gets into, and, and you can tell I really love talking about this, when you start arguing about the nature of God. So I will never look at university students and say, science points towards God and science also tells us God is good. But the flip side is, if I get in a discussion on science and God and someone says, well, okay, how's there, how come there's so much evil in the world? I go, time out. We're not discussing the nature of God. Let's go to the Bible for that. We're just discussing God the Creator and this is how science so strongly points towards it. Now, are they letting you do this in the schools? I mean, I know your passion is to get kids reading, but are you also able to approach the faith debate, the existence of God? Uh, when I go into schools, it's to talk about reading and writing. Mm. And um, that's such a great question because I'm not sure it would be fair to say to me, yeah, go ahead and give the kids a faith perspective and have a chance to influence them. And I, this is a scary subject, okay? Public, public schools and faith. But if you say to me, and Cindy and I had discussions in this, if you say to me, yeah, go in and talk about your Christianity to kids in a public school, then you also need to open the door to um, members of other religions of course. allowed to do that. Huh. And this is, now this is crucial to our discussion, I believe. You also open the door for science teachers in a public classroom to look at their kids and say, you're idiots if you believe in God. Right? Once you open that door to, to take faith in a public setting, and here's where I want to say to any parent out there listening, if you've struggled with your kids in a public school and they come home and they start talking about evolution, which isn't that a scary subject, the theory of evolution, here's where, and I'm pretty adamant about this, when Olivia's in grade eight and she comes home and says, Daddy, um, my teacher, science teacher says that evolution says there's no God, what do I do? I'll be walking right down to that school and I'll have a great discussion which will say, sir or madam, it's unfair of you to put a worldview in a public situation like this. And here's the big mistake that I think we as Christians make when it comes to the theory of evolution. 